Bear with me on this one, guys. I'm sick. So today I have an interesting topic for you guys, and it's one that I've been wanting to talk about for some time now, and it's the don't tase me, bro, don't tase me phrase slash meme. Hey, don't tase me, bro. Don't tase me. This one's an odd case because it's an extremely well-recognized and fondly remembered meme, but very few people actually know the full story behind it. The phrase don't taste me bro comes from a viral YouTube video uploaded on September 17th of 2007. The video features a college student being apprehended by campus police officers at some sort of public speaking event and at one point the student gets thrown out of the event and in the process gets tased by police and screams out don't taste me bro. Hey, don't taste me bro. Ow! Ow! Similar to Sweet Brown's Ain't Nobody Got Time For That, the phrase kind of took a life of its own. And it became one of those meme phrases that people would simply pair it around when the context suited it. And in the case of Don't Taze Me Bro, it was typically used jokingly in the context of like a police altercation. Please don't tase me, don't tase me bro. I'm an old man, I got a heart condition. <laughs> But there's more to this meme than just the phrase. And I wanna put a magnifying glass to the story behind the events that caused this kid to get tased in the first place. What happened to him after he screamed out, don't tase me bro, and essentially became a living meme. What's he doing now? And hopefully I'm able to answer all those questions in today's video. Before we get started, I'd like to thank The Ridge for sponsoring yet another one of my videos. They make these sleek metallic wallets that go in your front pocket. On their website, you'll find the wallets come in various types of metals and materials from aluminum to titanium to carbon fiber. And there's tons of colors to pick from. And The Ridge has more than just wallets. They have phone cases, book bags, charging cables, power banks, and even pocket knives. I've got a link in the description box that you guys can click that'll save you 10% off your order and that includes free worldwide shipping. That's ridge.com slash surf and use code surf to get 10% off that order. Anyways, on to the video. The story begins back on September 17th of 2007 in Gainesville, Florida at the University of Florida. On this particular September day, United States Senator from Massachusetts John Kerry was on campus giving a speech at the Constitution Day Forum, which was being held by the student body government on campus. Ah, good old Constitution Day. I'm sure you're very familiar with it and celebrate it every year, right? But if for whatever reason you don't know what Constitution Day is, it's basically a minor US holiday that celebrates the day that the United States Constitution was signed into law, all the way back on September 17th of 1787. It's one of those very American-like holidays similar to President's Day or Independence Day when people kind of reflect back on the legacy of the United States and it's also a convenient time for politicians to go do these types of public speaking events. And that's exactly what John Kerry was doing at this campus. After John Kerry finished up a speech at the University of Florida Constitution Day Forum, he then opened up his question and answer segment of the presentation and allowed individuals from the audience of approximately 50 attendees to walk up in front of the stage and ask him whatever question they pleased. And after answering a handful of softball questions, everything was going pretty smoothly for John Kerry. But eventually, after answering a few forum attendee questions with little to no problem, an issue would come up when 21-year-old University of Florida student Andrew Meyer entered the picture. And Andrew had a bone to pick with John Kerry. To give a bit of backstory about this Andrew Meyer guy, he was a fourth year communications undergraduate student at the university and was at one point a columnist for the student body newspaper called the Independent Florida Alligator. And he had written critical articles on political figures in the past. In addition to his work on the newspaper, he also maintained an online blog of sorts where he wrote additional pieces. And he had written about John Kerry at one point in the past, Andrew Meyer had issues with how John Kerry pulled out of the presidential race in 2004, just the day after the results came in, even in the midst of the Florida voter fraud allegations. And now John Kerry, the man he has all these frustrations towards, is just right here in front of him at this event, and well, Andrew has the opportunity to unload these frustrations straight to him face to face. And to continue to pile name upon name upon some wall in the future for a strategy that has failed. That's the distinction. Sir, 
I first and foremost want to thank you for your time. You spent a lot of time talking to those here today. I want to thank you for coming and being open and honest. Uh, you recommended a book to us earlier. I wanted to recommend a book to you. It's called Our Madhouse by Greg Palat. Yeah, I have it. Actually. Yeah, he's the top investigative journalist in America. I've already read it. And he says you won the 2004 election. Right. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? You won in 2004. In fact, there were multiple reports on the day of the election of disenfranchisement of black voters in Florida and Ohio. I'll ask my question. Thank you very much. I'll ask my question. I'm going to preface it. He's been talking for two hours. I think I can have two minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. I'm going to ask you my question. I'm going to, I'm going to inform people and then I'm going to ask you my question. So there are multiple reports of disenfranchisement of black voters on, on the day of the election in 2004. There was also voting machines, electronic voting machines in Volusia. County, Florida, that counted backwards. So amidst all these reports of, of phony, bogus stuff going on, how could you concede the election on the day? How could you concede the 2004 election on the day? But the question that would get Andrew's mic cut off and him forced off stage was asking if John Kerry was a member of the shadowy skull and bone society of Yale University. Also, are you a member of, were you a member of Skull and Bones from college and Bush? Were you in the same secret society as Bush? Were you in Skull and Bones? Thank you for cutting my mic. Thank you. Right. Are you going to arrest me? Excuse me. Excuse me. What are you arresting me for? Skull and Bones has long been a hot topic amongst conspiracy theorists, with many believing the powerful and influential people allegedly involved in the group are part of a conspiracy to control the world, a new world order of sorts. But anyways, after asking that question and being removed off stage by campus police officers, we would get one of the most viral catchphrase memes of all time. Oh, hold on your stomach! Do it now! Put your hands behind your back! I think you've never made it to the Do it now! Do it now. The situation is not You'll have an option. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'll answer this question. Get the f off me, man. I didn't do anything. Don't tase me, bro. Don't tase me. I didn't do anything. Ow! Please be telling me What did I do? After being apprehended and tasered by police, Andrew Meyer was arrested and charged with resisting arrest and disturbing the peace. Here's a statement from one of the police officers found in the police report. I managed to take control of Meyer's right hand and restrain it into one side of my handcuffs. Due to Meyer's erratic flailing, the inability to attain Meyer's left arm from his resistance and increased potential for injury with one cuff on, Sergeant King attempted to deploy a contact haze to no avail. He then instructed the officer to apply a contact haze to gain compliance in order to place Meyer's left hand into the other cuff. The officer gave verbal commands and informed Meyer that he would be tased if he did not comply. Once the officer applied the tase, Wise assisted Meyer's left arm to where I was able to apply the other cuff. Once he was restrained, he was escorted out of the auditorium where I checked the fitting and applied the double locked function on the cuffs. Andrew Meyer was then booked in jail and placed there for less than 24 hours. The video clip of this entire altercation was uploaded to YouTube the same day of it being recorded. It quickly went viral and found itself being broadcasted on mainstream media outlets like Fox News. There was much debate as to if the campus police response to Andrew Meyer's questioning of John Kerry was appropriate. And some were saying it was an example of police brutality. Because from what we can see in the footage, Meyer may have been an annoyance, but he was only exercising his right to free speech at an event open to the public. He certainly wasn't posing physical threats to anyone present at the forum. Regardless, he was tackled and tased. The day after the tasing took place, John Kerry gave his statement on the situation, which I feel contains some subtle jabs at the way the police handled everything. In 37 years of public appearances through wars, protests, and highly emotional events, I have never had a dialogue in this way. I believe I could have handled the situation without interruption, but I do not know what warnings or other exchanges transpired between the young man and the police prior to his barging to the front of the line and their intervention. I asked the police to allow me to answer the question and was in the process of responding when he was taken into custody. I was not aware that a taser was used until after I left the building. I hope that neither the student nor any of the police were injured. I regret enormously that a good healthy discussion was interrupted. The University of Florida president announced that two of the police officers responsible for subduing Andrew Meyer had been suspended with paid administrative leave until a full investigation could take place. But the whole debate about this police brutality stuff would end up on the back burner and find itself completely overshadowed by one of the more humorous elements of this situation. 
and that element was just the way that Andrew Meyer screams out, don't tase me, bro, in the clip. Don't tase me, bro. Don't tase me. The Don't Tase Me Bro video had gone viral with several re-uploads of the video pulling in hundreds of thousands of views, impressive numbers for the 2007 days of YouTube. The phrase quickly found itself embedded into pop culture, and the Don't Tase Me Bro phrase was parodied quite frequently in the later months of 2007. Oh, don't tase me, bro. I don't need this. I don't need this. I didn't do anything. I'm not tasing you. I haven't done a single thing. I just want some chips. Don't tase me, bro. I'm not tasing you. Is anybody you. seeing this? Hey. Get, get up, oh, oh, okay, all right. Get don't tase me, bro. Don't tase me, bro. Don't tase me, bro. As time goes by, memes just kind of fall out of popularity. However, in this case, the phrase don't tase me, bro, still persists and I feel like it exists somewhere in the back of the minds of many, hanging on to a bundle of neurons dedicated to preserving the memory of late 2000s internet memes. The phrase don't tase me, bro, still finds occasional use. As I said earlier in the video, it's used in the niche context of commenting on law enforcement altercations. Hey guys, vote for me for class president and I'll put beer in the water fountains and cameras in the girls' locker rooms. Woo! Go Bobcats! Sir, would you please uh, take your seat? Don't tase me, bro. Drop the saber and step away from the futuristic orb. I take orders from no man. Liberté, égalité, fraternité! <laughs> Don't taste me, bro. So yeah, I guess you could say it's probably a dead meme, but it's definitely not as dead as some of the other memes that popped up in 2007. So now that I've discussed the spread and the backstory behind Don't Taste Me, Bro, I just want to briefly talk about what Andrew Meyer did after all this happened. Well, in the weeks following this situation, it was being reported that Andrew's charges were dropped in exchange for him being placed on an 18-month voluntary probation. While this is certainly better than having those charges, uh, getting probation isn't the greatest either, but what are you gonna do? He was also granted the opportunity to give his side of the story when in November of 2007, he was invited to go on the Today Show and talk to Matt Lauer about the whole situation. And this is what he has to say. What was your agenda? Why did you go to that forum that morning? What did you hope to accomplish? I went there with serious political questions that you saw me asking. My only agenda was to raise the important issues that the media doesn't talk about. The disenfranchisement of voters. And when I talk about disenfranchisement, I'm talking about American voters not being allowed to vote and not having their votes count. When you say you wanted to, to cast light on that, shed light on that, had you thought, going into this event, Andrew, that if that means that I have to get a little bit unruly and I have to get the attention of Senator Kerry and the police and I have to be arrested, so be it? Not at all. I mean, I just wasn't able to maintain my composure. I went there to try and ask these questions calmly, but even asking these questions in today's environment, it causes a scene. I didn't intend to create one. So you didn't go there thinking, okay, I may get arrested, I may get a taser gun stuck in my side, but as long as I shed light on these issues, it's okay. I wasn't thinking that at all. You've written some letters of apology, correct? You know, I did step out of line at the forum. I broke the forum rules, and I want to apologize for that. I also want to apologize for the negative light this whole incident has cast on the university. The, nothing like this has ever happened at the university before. Nothing like this has ever happened to me so before. So wait, let me make sure. Were you wrong or were the police who tasered you wrong? What's your opinion on that? You know, I think, I think that the police were, were acting, they were doing their job, is what they were trying to do. I think that... What was Ker Senator Kerry's reaction to this? What, when you get grabbed by the police, were you expecting to hear him yell, let him go, he has a right to ask these questions, and what response did you get from Senator Kerry? Well, you know, Ke uh, John Kerry did say that he wanted to answer my questions. You know, I'd love to come back here with him on this side of the couch, and we could go through my questions and, and get some answers from him. I would love to do that. And I feel like he comes off a bit jaded in this interview, but can you really blame him? But things weren't all bad for Andrew Meyer, because he was actually able to somewhat monetize the Don't Taste Me Bro catchphrase. Sometime in late September of 2007, he trademarked the 
phrase, don't tase me bro, and began to sell t-shirts with the phrase plastered on them. While I'm unable to find any sales number for these, I would imagine he made some pretty decent spending money from the sale of these t-shirts because the meme was pretty popular back then. In 2008, Andrew would ultimately end up leaving the University of Florida and transfer to Florida International Institute and would switch his studies from communications to studying law. In an interview with American Journalism Review, he elaborates as to why he made the switch. It was absolutely the 2007 experience that pushed me to go to law school. There were a lot of legal things going on that showed me how completely unprepared I was for the reality of the world. There is a reason that lawyers are paid thousands of dollars just for their knowledge. It's because the knowledge that they have is extremely valuable. That whole incident just opened my eyes to how important it is to understand the laws around you, even if just for your own personal sake, fully know and understand your rights. But after graduating law school, Andrew Meyer would ultimately go back to his journalistic slash communications roots and pursued journalism as his career. He's worked for several different publications, most of which could be described as free speech and civil rights watchdogs. And in 2018, he went on to publish a book which reflected on the 2007 Constitution Day Forum event and his experience on being a living meme. He now works as an editor for Culture.com, a news site that reports on politics, free speech issues like deplatforming, and various other things. But without getting too far into the weeds, that's pretty much the full story behind the Don't Taste Me Bro meme. Let me know what you guys thought about this video in the comment section and let me know who or what you want me to cover next. Major shout out to my patrons, I appreciate you guys. Wavy Web Surf out, peace.